Mode. Good morning, everyone. Russell Wright, Network Empire and ThemeZoom.com. I'm so excited that we're here on week two of Tech Foundation, actually Online Business Technical Foundation. We've adapted the name to Online Business because, as you guys have heard, we have a lot of people who walk away from even our live certification events going, wait a second, that wasn't just SEO and traffic generation. You showed me how to build a sustainable business and think about it as an entrepreneur, not just a technologist. So that's really what Sue and I have been building. That's been our vision. And we have found that we, Sue and I have met a lot of really great technologists who are not super great entrepreneurs. And so that's why this week is so important because technologists tend to be a little weak on the marketing side of things. So we've put this module in to prepare you uh, for the ground up. Let me just see if I get my, see the questions. Can you guys hear me? Can you give me a one? Just make sure that everything's okay. Just give me a one. Okay, I've got you. I've got a little bit of a unique computer set up this morning. Lionel's here, Neil, Brian, a few other people starting to come in. Let's just give it a bit of a minute here. Make sure that everybody on this group call can see what's going on. Okay. All right. And give me a one if everybody's awake or if I need to make you a cup of coffee and FTP it to you. Too early for jokes? Oh, there's somebody. I okay. <laughs> Sue, you should just like go back to bed. Like this girl right? <laughs> just said you don't think that making multi million dollars is easy. This girl sleeps, you know, sometimes. Actually she's been you've been getting some sleep, haven't you? Nope, not really. Okay. Yeah, this summer's been better than this. <laughs> <laughs> I do tea, Neil, yes. I am happy to make you a cup of tea depending upon what kind it is. Um, so this is interesting. I'm going to have to figure out a way to watch your guys' questions. Okay, let me go ahead and put this on the big screen. Dealing with multiple monitors that are all broken down into four segments so that I can watch all the traffic at the same time. All right, uh, we've got full screen preview. Let me just try this, see if it works. It doesn't work too good, okay. All right, we're gonna jump right in here and, and I suppose everybody else who started to walk in a little bit late can either get the recording. I gotta say, Lionel, I think you're actually in both courses, both technical foundation training courses at the same time. Your ambition has been noted. <laughs> All right, so what is this week about? I've got a few things we're going to go over on the screen here. Uh, we're going to, in the left upper quad, I've got the WT2, which means week two, solution to pain. I'm going to go over the perpetual uh, lead magnet machine uh, system that soon I created. I'm going to go over the WR1 primary site building. This is a little more complicated. It's more about a process map about where we are in a process map. And then I'm going to make sure that you guys know about this wiki entry. Uh, this wiki entry is called Stackable Persuasion Theme to Keyword to Headline System. I couldn't come up with a single word for that, so I just laid it all out. And what we mean by stackable is, um, let me just go ahead and shut off my Skype. That might, even though I'm on a beast here that Jimmy's brother built for me, I probably should just take it easy. Okay, the stackable persuasion theme to keyword. I would like to open today's conversation with an, a really important word. It's a, it's a word that we use frequently, and you'll find it in almost any educational system. And I find that teachers, instructions, universities, colleges, if they paid a little bit more attention to the stackability thing, students wouldn't be so confused. A lot of the times I found that students really are in the situation where they don't understand what the hell they're doing anything or what it's for. No offense. And uh, pardon the language, rather. But the reason that we need stackability is because it gives you a good vision for what's actually coming. 
and why you're doing what you're doing and how, for example, a, a single circuit or simp a simple binary off-on switch could actually give rise over time to the entire Internet and all the sophistication and complexity that we have. Okay, so this is why I have this in the lower right-hand corner. So I just wanted to open up so that you guys know where you're at because there's a, quite a few homework assignments um, in the, the, now that I really think of it, this week probably could be uh, week, two weeks. And I'm going to talk to Sue a little bit later on about importing some of these refresher components into uh, the Tech Foundation Level 2, maybe with some enhancements and some advanced things. Uh, Sue, remind me to talk to you about that a little bit later. But these are key, key functions that make it difficult if you're purely technologist so we're going to give you these homework assignments. So I want to bring your attention to how you get to this location. Okay. Um, just make sure you go to week two inside the Tech Foundation. And you're going to see that each one of these have a, once you click on, uh, I know, Neil, I, I'm pardon, just a little introduction here. I knew everybody was going to ask for the quad monitor um, <laughs> application. And it's called Stardoc, I believe. S-T-A-R. D O C K, and it's really really cool. Um, when I'm helping Sue build networks and do things like that, I like to have my Google Analytics, my Google Webmaster Tools, and individual client sites so I can see all the traffic coming in in real time. So I have a large monitor on my right that's got a quad, and I'm always watching traffic. It's never off. It's always on in my office. And then I have another large screen monitor with two small monitors: one for email, one for Skype, and I have a quad up there so that I can quickly pull things like I'm showing you now. So that is important, by the way. I um, wanted to give you guys, you know, just a little insight. I, I like to do it that way. There's other ways to do it. Some people get the, um, I think Sue has a preference for the Wall Street monitors, like multiple monitors, quadded, you know, individual units. Um, so there's more than one way to do it. You know, that's just what I do. And it doesn't take, doesn't take up that much, um, much bandwidth. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Oh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and keep my things the same way it is here. Attendees. All right. The homework assignment, just so we know before we start, let's, is your tasks for week two. All of our Tech Foundation training courses have tasks assigned to them. We're still filling a couple of them out in some of the weeks on, for those of you who are in Tech Foundation Layer 2, the advanced module. Um, but you're going to see that this week is really about completing your, I think this will work for you, let me, this week's tasks are about completing your painkiller or vitamin section, and step two is your ISDNA, which we're going to go over. This is your frequently asked questions to should ask questions worksheet. Your frequently asked questions to should ask questions worksheet. And this is an incredibly important process. Give me a one if you are familiar with our FAQ, SAQ briefly, or if you've never heard of it before, you've never been exposed to our material before. Neil, did you finish a FAQ to SAQ worksheet already? Or do you need to do it again? Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. You did one for a different project. Okay. Submit your... Yes, um, this is uh, Mike Koenig. Uh, it was very helpful in the process of the 4x4. Four four. Um, his purpose was a little bit different than ours. Our purpose was to give somebody a basic stacking system so that uh, advanced, what, we, what Sue calls empire keywords, could be uh, incorporated. And when you're stacking systems, guys, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. I always give credit, and I gave credit to Mike Koenig in pronounced Koenig, as he would tell you himself. <laughs> He's uh, apt to correct people on that. Um, that we always give credit where credit is due at, or, for any uh, memes or systems. Okay, so that's something that's very important to me personally. And yes, the four by four, the the um, frequently asked questions and should ask questions is a brilliant idea because it really is a movement from what you think the market's asking to what they're actually or. For what they're what for what the market is actually asking, you know, based on keyword scraping, and, and Mike wasn't really using it for that. So since we have data parsing and scraping and uh, keyword kind of mindset, technical mindset, 
the, the should ask questions is more of the marketing. So frequently asked questions is really about, you can go and find them on Google. Like if you brought keyword research really points to frequently asked keywords, frequently asked questions. The should ask uh, questions requires you think a little bit more about what the pain actually is. So we're going to get into that. We'll keep moving through this. Now in step four, this is where you're going to submit your five themes to Matt and we're going to do Kraken research. We've, this is one of the, there are some students who have said us that this is one of the most valuable aspects of this coaching and training of the certification level because we're able to help you not only, you know, drill into it and we'll bring back the best ones for you and we'll walk you through and, and with the coaching time that you have. Okay. I just want to real quickly, for those of you in this uh, session this morning, are you, uh, have you, are you, have you taken this foundation training one? Give me one if you've already been here and you're just auditing your old students or even certification students as a lot of people start to come in here. Or if this is brand new, give me a two if this is brand new for you, this is your first time through the course. Just so give me a little bit of a reference. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, excellent. Good to know. Good to know. It's Because I really, um, as Sue will tell you, this is a very passionate area of mine because if you get this wrong, you don't make as much money, <laughs> really, like literally. You'll see sometimes an increase of 40 to 50% in, in your revenue when you get this right with less effort. So as they say, you have to begin with the end in mind. And by beginning with the end in mind, you'll be able to follow this all the way through. We're going to go over the break-even calculator spreadsheet, and that helps you determine um, how much money you're going to make. And then you can watch previous uh, week two webinars. These webinars have become kind of entertaining because sometimes we have arguments, sometimes we have people who have uh, have interesting predicaments. Um, they're not all the same, so this is why we archive them for you, and very, very important stuff. And again, before we get too deep in, i got to make sure that everybody understands that we have a no-tolerance policy for theft, uh, digital theft of any kind, distributing, uh, black hat forms, the rest. Um, just be sure to see our disclaimer. I have been asked by our legal department to make sure that I let everybody know that when it comes to our certification courses, uh, we have already been successful in being compens becoming compensated for theft. Okay, so we're we're not. This is not internet marketing land, folks. <laughs> this is your material here. The certification. We have students making upward of 50k per year uh, after having been working home moms and dads. This is a real career, a real business and want to make sure you guys know that we're protecting that for you. Thank you. I just have to say that each time. I have this little note on my desk, and of course we mean it. All right, let's go back to uh, where we're at here. Now, let's just jump right into where this all started, okay? This is the graphic, which is the in your training area on week two. It's called the Perpetual Lead Magnet Machine, okay? It's a way to represent to share with you in a flash animation how Sue and I structured the stackable constructs of how to build a site. And this actually came from early years with Themes in 1.0, I think in 2006, 2007, when we started realizing that a lot of technologists, keyword researchers, data miners, affiliate marketers were getting stuck in a perpetual loop of research. Okay, uh, for instance, they would uh, spend seven months on keyword research and never get a blog or a website up, okay? So what we did is we created, part of what we discovered is that people were forgetting one important fact. I don't know if you can really see this. Let me just, let me increase the size of the browser for a moment. Can you guys see that now? Is it a little better? It's probably as good as it's going to get. But you've got access to this flash animation. And I don't want to slide over this. I want to, I want to make sure that we don't move on until you guys uh, give me the thumbs up on this. And this is this was something that I built just to kind of express, like, help me, I have a problem about money keyword X. Let's not forget that for the most part, the Internet is still about human beings. It's not only about machines. And one of the things that happens when you get into SEO and traffic generation and online business and building your online storefronts and these different things, one of the things that happens is it can be easy to forget when you get caught up in the SEO magic or the meta magic that people are looking for your website, not robots, okay? Not only robots. 
again, you know, I'm not saying that the robots don't exist. One of the one of the things that we really spend a lot of time with at the live certification event is that this training, this certification, is really designed to help you uh, integrate the machine world and the human world into your web development and your online business behaviors, your online business strategies, okay? So the, the image here is just really your industry solution, which is the FAQ, SAQ, uh, is transformed into a painkiller article or video, all of them targeting the human and their problem. You, you're, you're trying to help your customer, your client, in the same way that I want to help you right, um, pass this course. Does that make sense? Okay, just like an online coach or... Uh, a a solution to any of the products on Amazon, everything from you know aspirin, you know to whatever it is. You, we're going to help you. We're going to look at whether you're a vitamin or painkiller here in a minute. But you've got to know that because if you're a vitamin, you know the the human being and the behavior of why they buy a vitamin is very different than why they buy a, a um, aspirin, right? So you've got to keep that in mind. Your industry headlines, once you have that, then your headlines become more effective because you can speak to the problem. It's remarkable how many terrible headlines there are on the Internet. Um, I think there is a lot of really, people are starting to get which headlines work, and so they start imitating each other, and you, see, you start seeing all the same thing. But headlines are significantly drawn from the painkiller solution. Okay? And then, of course, then you put your money keyword in there, and then all of them work together. And that's where everything is stackable. Okay, we're going to go into that just a little bit more. Okay. Somebody said exercise seven was very good. Okay, so hopefully you guys um, understand that the ISDNA, where you are right now, is the ISDNA process seven secrets to killer abs without exercise neil just wrote a headline inside our inside the uh, questions window <laughs> well let's look at that don't get me start don't be throwing out headlines and you'll see you want to dissect them neil it's me you're talking to <laughs> neil do you think that's actually a good headline yes or no for real do you think it would be highly converting medium converting or low converting neil has created a headline in the question area called seven secrets to killer abs without exercise everybody give me a one if you think it's a good headline a two if you think it's a marginal headline a three if you think it's a poor headline okay Neil decided to hedge himself on that one and say medium <laughs> here's an interesting phenomenon of Neil and Tim said he thought it was a medium it's got all the components of an excellent headline because it has the number seven. That means there's seven things. All of you guys know that the number breakdown on the web works better than just generalizations. I think even I think even average marketers know that. You see a lot of headlines with four reasons why, two things to avoid. And we're going to get into why that works at some point. But my goodness, does it work. And here's a really crazy thing. It's never not going to work. That is what we call a neuro enhancement. Okay? We'll get into that a little bit more. There's a bunch of blind spots and predictable neurocognitive processes that will always work in that way. Giving the brain a heuristic or a shortcut to say like seven secrets, what it does is it immediately get, gets the person thinking, oh, if there's only seven secrets, I can look at this article real quick and walk away with, with the bullet points, right? Sorry about that window, guys. I'm going to keep, keep it over near the monitor. So yes, Neil, that is excellent. That will get clicks. Killer abs is... is uh, is awesome and without exercise um, the interesting thing is is that the psychic immune system of the planet's marketing mediums is kind of going wild it would be interesting to test what I would do Neil with that one is I would test seven secrets to killer abs and leave it just like that and then I would test and then I would test it with the without exercise that would be very interesting okay and then probably we would find some depending upon the target we would find um, kind of a balance between that. I probably write two other headlines. So that's a good one. So by the way, if you guys are going to throw out samples and and things like that, get ready for me to jump in <laughs> right there. I probably won't get one of those again. Okay, so let's go. And the, by the way, you can hit me up on Skype for those headlines as well. Okay, you saw hopefully my com my communicata with somebody in the basic room who was asking 
for help on a headline. And as he got deeper and deeper into it, I explained to him that my marketing and headline writing uh, fee is $2,000 an hour. And you guys have access to some of that for your, you know, if you have a headline, that's the advantage of being in this group. And just so you know where you guys are right here. Oh, Neil is saying that he's doing that on Facebook. Interesting. I would run some other ones in there, Neil, too. Interesting. Okay. Um, Facebook's weird. It's just a whole nother weird. <laughs> okay, so um, just want to show you guys where you are in this overview map. Can everybody see that? Just give me a one. Make sure I haven't lost you. My screen hasn't frozen up. A one. Okay, thanks, guys. Everybody got it. Okay. Just know that we do have a map, and this map is just designed for in the empire building process to know where you are in the process, not only using our tools, but just in general. <laughs> Brian's asking me about my own headline. You guys are mean. You're going to go for me, aren't you? You guys are going to be a hard batch. <laughs> Brian said, live certification for one-fourth price. Uh, well, honestly, uh, when I put that headline out, Brian, immediately I, I got about 20% higher traffic. I watched the, the, the traffic hit. The, when, from a mailing list, you guys, I watched the traffic hit the site in real time. So if I put a mailing out, I want to see who's hitting the site and how long they're staying. <clears throat> that one did pretty good. I think I could have done better. And here's the other thing, guys. There's no perfection ever, really, in neuromarketing. There's not like, okay, this this is right and this is wrong. It, there's just, you know, what, this makes sales and this doesn't. And really what I want to walk, what you guys, I want you to walk away from at this course, at the certification event and the rest is an understanding of the, the cognitive principles in the brain that will never change, such as interesting but incomplete Understanding why numbers work, uh, understanding when to, you know, three things to avoid. When you keep those in mind, you don't really have to change because they're not going to go away anytime soon. But when you're, but you, when you're making really crazy claims <clears throat> like, you know, rock hard abs without any exercise at all, it depends on the skepticism in your market and you actually take a risk, you know. The fact of the matter is that the certification for one quarter price it's true, you do get certification for one quarter price if you pay for your seat now, right? So, you know, that would have to go to my warm list, and it was targeting a non-skeptical market for the most part. And, you know, so there's just a few other things. I tested another email headline that did not as good as that. It's just a general, you know. Okay, so here you guys are. You are on your, just go ahead and come back here. On week one, defining a market, find the market pain, frequently asked questions, should ask questions, pain finder, and this is where we are right here, okay? Find your pain in the market, submit keywords for cracking research, is going to come last, but frequently asked questions. Use pain finder. Um, just a heads up, you guys, that I'm tweaking pain finder right now, so it'll be up in a moment, but if you try to hammer on it right now, you're going to get a message, so just wanted to give you a little, that we are working on it. So I don't waste your time with help test tickets or anything. Okay. All right, good. Pain Finder is awesome because it really does get right into what the, the, the frequently asked questions. What is the market actually asking right now? Okay. So let's take, let's just really quickly go back and visit this. So hopefully you guys get this. The ISDNA is about humans. What's the frequently asked uh, to should ask? Should ask is where people get wrapped around the axle. I'm going to help you unwind that. Okay, then you go right into the Kraken principle. Then you prepare for the technical foundation. Then you get right into the, by the time you have your pain finder and ISDNA, ISDNA KDNA, I'm sorry, your ISDNA is done. You should ask questions, a frequent ask question, spreadsheet filled out, which we'll go over a bit. Create your KDNA, EKDNA. Then you're ready to push out to a silo structure, right? You can go through a blog. Um, you can go, you can actually, you know, our plugin is designed to help you with WordPress, but you can do this with any type of system. Then you start creating your articles. All again, these articles should still stay true to the principle of pain versus vitamin. You're going to finalize your blog or website. You're going to extract HDNA headlines. You can start getting these headlines right. 
and then you're going to really blast off okay, into that. And you're going to rinse and repeat. Okay, this is where the perpetual uh, keyword machine, or what we call the perpetual money machine, actually comes in in level two. This whole course is designed to prepare you for uh, level two. And, uh, of course, it's standalone. Like, you'll walk away with a profitable site and everything. If you want to get into the more advanced methods, that's also cool. And one more, one more quick overview before we get into the actual on, on hands, uh, hands-on uh, process here is I feel like this stackable persuasion theme to keyword to headlines uh, simple graph is really important, mostly because I was having a couple of students that were having a really hard time understanding what the heck I was talking about by stackable in terms of the practical world, right? And I had a few students have this eureka moment uh, with this chart. So let's just spend a little bit of time with it. Um, can everybody give me a one if you can see this chart? This um, kind of, okay. So what I've done is really pretty simple. It's, it's, when, if you come to our organization from a software perspective, uh, it's a little weird because Kraken is so powerful that it pulls back the most profitable keywords, pretty much all of them that have money associated with them in terms of pay-per-click, what we call total search market value by just putting in a single keyword. You could put in the word car, and it's going to scrape the web. It's going to find out all the theme topics, depending upon their relationship and the genealogy of the relationship to that word. And that's kind of a trip, because things don't do that. So people have to read, you know, other software tools don't do that. So the vertical theme is important to understand. All right. So what I'd like you guys to do now is type in your vertical theme in the window so that I can see it. This is not a sit on your hands uh, group training here. I'm going to want to have you guys do some exercise with me. Okay. Tim, Tim Edwards, I like it. <laughs> Hangover. Okay. Money problems. Okay. Anybody else going to give me their... And if it's a secret, don't give it to me. Okay. Okay. Now, another person gave me stocks to buy now. Another person gave me quit drinking alcohol. Okay. Anything else? Sounds like a couple of you are in the same um, general area. Let me know if you want to know who's in similar markets. Maybe you can support each other in some way. Um, okay, so you have some of those ideas. Now, I would like to say things about, like, quit drinking alcohol. Uh, that's, okay, what you gave me there was how to quit drinking alcohol. What you gave me there was not a vertical theme. Your vertical theme, what would your vertical theme for Kraken be? Okay. Lionel, what would your vertical theme, what you've done is you've given me a how-to. You've given me the, the headline. If you were going to go research this, what would you actually probably tie? Would it be health? No. So basically what your vertical, I mean, health could be there, but it's usually quite related. So for instance, if... You think you're, you know, if the pain that you're solving is quit drinking alcohol, the word alcohol and potentially alcoholism could be a different vertical theme, okay? And that's the, that would be the term that you would put into Kraken, okay, to drill out. In fact, when you give that to Matt, probably going to want to have him drill into alcohol or alcoholism. Sue might have some other ideas, but that's what I'm really trying to point out to you is you jumped right to the headline, and people do that a lot. In order to swallow your market whole, you have to go to your vertical. You have to understand the relationship of the pain that you're solving from your product or service or, or self-help mechanism. You've got to extract the keyword at a vertical that it's surrounding. And it may not always be contained within your um, Lionel like you had it here, how to. That was very good. That's a great headline. So alcohol is going to be one of your uh, third vertical uh, keyword themes, and, you, and probably that will bring back alcoholism by default as a co-occurrence, then you might want to do a breakaway drill into the word alcoholism. Okay, Neil, for example, money problems. Your 
vertical would be money. You get that, Neil? Okay, you knew that, right? Of course you did. <laughs> okay, um, so this is what we're looking for, folks. So, so Neil, let's just use Neil for a second. Money, pain cured, money problems. Buyer solution, what would it be? Neil, I'm going to put you on the spot since you seem to know what you're doing. What would the buyer solution keyword? Just it may, again, this is not in any way limited to um, one of these. We're just doing one simple example. Okay. Interesting. Okay, I like your perspective. Um, may I share that with a group, Neil? Or are you protective? Okay. Um, he, the niche that he's in is reduce taxes, which I definitely like. Um, so reduce taxes. And I like that because he's positioning the – reducing the taxes can be in more than one, you know, angle as a, as a problem solver. Okay. So let me see. That would be something like the buyer solution keyword, but it would be – Reducing taxes. That's fine. It, you can have a pure diverse word involved if your um, buyer solution keyword is different, so it doesn't have to stack. That's not really one of your issues, Neil. Um, you can be targeting. Well, I mean, I understand what you mean. You can be targeting the the re tax reduction industry, but I really would. Um, I like the fact that you're going to target the money problems industry, but I think you need to, this is why you do a vertical theme drill and crack in before you make the decision, because there really is um, a lot of different ways that you can approach the tax reduction industry. So this is a perfect example, you guys, what uh, Neil has just done. Neil, when I asked Neil what his vertical, what he thought his vertical theme, what he believed his vertical theme is, he said money problems. Okay, and then of course Sue or I would have said, okay, then your vertical theme is money. Okay, problems would be a little bit too big. <laughs> There's too many kinds of problems. So it's usually a single keyword, and and it's usually a word that's impossibly huge to rank for. Like it's not something you would target directly. Um, like the word car, nobody in their right mind would try to rank number one for the word car unless they were a multi multi million dollar company, right? You guys understand what I'm saying? Give me one. But in Kraken, we still drill into it. You guys understand that? We still drill into it because it's a beast. Okay? We're only doing it to provide, to find the data. So the interesting thing, Neil, is that if I drilled in using Kraken or when Matt gets your keywords, if you had given him money problems, he probably would have drilled into money and probably would have drilled into money problems. But this is why it's so important to connect your product with your vertical, what you're actually selling first before you just guess what your vertical theme is because your money problems is actually not your vertical. I don't think. Your vertical is tax, taxes. <laughs> and tax reduction is a niche within the tax keyword vertical. Get that? So if you were to use Kraken, you would be drilling into taxes, and I would probably drill into tax reduction, which is probably huge, and reduce taxes, maybe Kraken, I would also do it in there. So I would do a theme cluster with all of those just to see what was happening in the research, okay? And then later on, we would get into, okay, money problems. Well, people would love to reduce their taxes because they're having money problems. Positioning tax reduction as a solution to, to money problems is a penny saved as a penny a penny saved as a penny earned approach it's indirect you got that right neil a penny saved as a penny earned but it's not direct it's indirect so that's not going to be your vertical usually your vertical is direct i'm going to repeat that usually your vertical market is a direct pain not an indirect pain now i love what you did with that neil you indirectly approached the pain in the market but it's not your technical vertical did everybody get that? Any any Eureka moments in here? Anyone? Bueller? No Eureka moments. Okay. You guys are all already got that. All right, cool. 
All right, let's go ahead and move on. Otherwise, we'll be here too long today. My, my things tend to run on a little bit too long, so I'll keep things uh, rolling. If you guys need a coffee break or a bathroom break or something, I try to keep it under two hours. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody walks away with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we might accomplish this. Okay, we can move past this. Let's go ahead and move to the painkiller vitamin. Please give me a 1 if your product or service is a pain, and give me a 2 if it's a vitamin. This is extremely important before you even begin. If you write your marketing copy or build your website to a vitamin, when it's really a pain, you will confuse your market. If you create marketing copy, emails, and a website for a product or service that is a painkiller, and it's written like it's a vitamin, you won't make as many sales. Everybody got that? Okay. I've got two people telling me that they're, they have a painkiller. Okay. Has anyone already done the four, um, multi, the $4 million market research questions? Give me a one if you have and a two if you have not. Okay. Painkiller, painkiller. So here's literally, I've given you guys this in a step-by-step -step process. Yeah, this is a bit of an old document, 2009, but it's an oldie but goodie. So I'm not just giving you guys rehash material. This did have its value and still does. Um, this is one of the documents that we kept <laughs> from early theme Zoom because it's pretty good. Okay. Bottom line is here's how to determine... Give me a one if you want me to go over this, or two if you want me to move on. If you already guys, you might already have this. It's pretty out there in the internet land. Okay. Everybody, give me a response, please. One if you want me to cover this, two if I should move on. Okay. All right. Most of the people want me to cover this. I'll keep it fast for those of you who've already accomplished it. Okay. Just really super quick. Nothing really big deal to this. Let's play a little game. Aspirin. One if it's a vitamin, two if it's a painkiller. Right, that should be pretty obvious, right? Let me, I'm going to throw in a trick question. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy, Neil. Um, let me try another one. In most cases, milk at the grocery store. One if it's a vitamin, two if it's a painkiller. Correct. Okay. I'm going to throw in a trick question as well. A backup hard drive, Western Digital. One if it's a pain. One if it's a vitamin, two if it's a painkiller. Three if it's both. Right. Okay, you guys got, got, got that. I tried to make it not. Right. Sue is unmuted, so she must have something to say about all this. No. Okay. I was just going to say, if, uh, if you get kids at home, milk is definitely, and you're out of milk, milk is definitely a pain Yeah, and so all of you guys know I said most of the time, and I prefaced it because I knew she'd be a wise girl about it. <laughs> um, remember, anything when you want it bad enough and the market conditions are right, can become a painkiller. For instance, this morning, when I was setting up this monitor, I did not have an HDMI cable here in this particular location okay, for this particular monitor. And it was 45 minutes before the webinar. HDMI, HDMI cables most of the time for me, this is a true story by the way, most of those times are vitamins. I go on Amazon and I buy you know, a $14 Amazon relabeler, right? or Sue and I both use those sometimes. But, you know, I only had an hour and I wanted to have this monitor for this other thing. So that HDMI cable became a painkiller, right? So I had to go to the hardware store and they charged me three times the amount that I would pay on Amazon for a monster HDMI cable. That is a situation based on market conditions where what is a vitamin becomes a painkiller. You guys make sense? Okay, we can move on. So here's what you're really looking for. Is there an irrational passion? Yes or no? Look at this with your niche, okay? Because I now know what you guys are all doing. 
Is there an irrational passion? Are they actively searching for it? Are there few product choices available or not? Now, when you get all three of those, you're awesome, right? Now, an irrational passion is a little weird, so let's just go over this. Several of you this morning have already described irrational passions. Alcoholism. It's the most irrational passion there is. <laughs> okay, so you're good. Um, I think it was Lionel who was doing that. Taxes. Uh, people are passionate about that controversial topic. Okay. Um, so you have all of these things happening. Uh, an irrational passion would be an example of that, would be uh, guitar playing. Ho there are some hobbyists that it crosses the line from fun stuff to do into got to buy everything in my house, including a lunch pail and a coffee cup with that thing on it. Okay. That is irrational, meaning you don't put your vitamins on a coffee cup or a t-shirt. You guys understand what I'm saying? You put things that are irrationally passionate, like a guitar player or a lyric. or So the guitar tablature industry is an example of one of our clients uh, that we have. It's 100% irrational passion. The, the guitar community, the vertical would be guitar playing or guitars. Okay, does that make sense, you guys? So now you guys know what you're dealing with here, and I think we can put that one to rest. So what you want to do uh, in this particular thing, this is just a preliminary shot across the bow with your thing, is you're going to just go ahead and determine whether or not you have an irrational passion. You're going to go ahead and determine what your number, your scale is. Sorry, I'm going all the map here. You just want to look and see if you're, matching there okay and then you can just go ahead and fill this worksheet out this is stuff that you do as a preliminary glance before you get into the FAQ SAQ because if you actually hit the frequently asked questions and the should ask questions if you actually do that before you actually have done this it's a little bit weird if you're kind of trying to reposition a painkiller as a you know a vitamin as a painkiller and by the way you can do that you guys you can reposition you know it's like what's uh it's kind of like sue was saying a, a milk in the right market conditions can be a painkiller for instance a baby formula is a kind of milk right so the kids screaming late at night can't make milk that product is a demand it's pain so you got to make sure this is just designed to really help you Determine, and I've done a lot of work for you in terms of irrational passion, some really cool things you can do on the Internet to see how irrationally passionate that market is. And let's go over a few of these really quick. All right, I would like you guys to answer these if you know them with a one and a two if you don't. Does the market that you're in have its own magazine? Okay, and if you don't know, just leave it. I'm going to go through these rather quickly. Okay. Most of them, most of you guys do not. Some, uh, several of them do. Great question. Neil asks, well, do you mean the vertical market or my niche? Here's an interesting thing. I really do guys want, I want you guys to look up the vertical and see, even if you're in a niche that's a, that's a breakaway, it's something uh, tucked away in that. I really do want you to look up the vertical and see if there's an association. Okay. For an example is there's a plastic surgeons association. Okay, and for example, it's magazine. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I jumped too far ahead with the association. That was I was talking about. Does it have? But associations do have magazines. So for example, if you uh, taxes, right? There, there is a tax magazine, <laughs> and there are you know if you're in the niche where it's like tax reduction. Um, there are newsletters about that. There are private organizations as well. Okay, Neil is saying he's actually on an IRS forum right now. Yeah, well, I was on the phone with him for three hours, so how's that? Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, does it have uh, its own television? Does it have its own television reality TV series like Cake Boss, American Idol, America's Next Top Model, Chef Academy, Fashion Star? There's another one I should add here that my girlfriend watches. It's uh, house remodeling, you know, where this lady is like remodeling these houses. 
That's because it's an irrational passion, right? And who sponsors those kinds of shows? For like the home remodeling, that's like Home Depot, and those guys make a ton of brand equity from those types of shows. Okay, so anybody have a? Uh, give me a one if you've got a reality TV show. Two if you don't. Okay, ish. <laughs> Brian, what is the ish? What what would the reality be on that? Okay. Kramer's Mad Money, right? Stock picks. That's right. I forgot you were in stock picks. Mad money. Um, another thing I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of why I asked this. I'm actually sneaking in a setup for um, Tech Level Foundation 3, which is the automatic pin bid site um, machinery. Um, when you make your WR2, if you decide to create automatic um, video, what we call engagement rank sites that generate, you know, for our stuff, anywhere between 3,000 and 10,000 unique visitors a month that stay on your WR1 site anywhere between 3 minutes and 30 minutes which is insanely weird for automatic sites. You would take Kramer's Mad Money and like on those YouTube videos and you'd pull those back. And then you'd of course have your under video banners and different things like that. So the reason that you wanna know about these things, the reason everything starts to set itself up in the neural marketing of it, because in my mind, I'm already setting up entertainment-based keywords as well. Whoops. Give me a one if you guys get that, that everything that we do is kind of the setup for your long-term semi-automation. Ah, to heck with it. Pin vids are 100% automated. I just, I'm sorry if that scares you, but it just is. And they work. And they're sustainable. And they're green. They're evergreen. Yeah, except when your host sucks. I won't repeat who said that. But <laughs> yeah, you. Um, I would strongly recommend when you take your level three automatic later on in a few months that you use our hosting that we prepared for you on that, unless you've got a server. If you've got a server, you're good. Don't try to do shared host spacing. If you're trying to make 10,000, you know, a million pages with 10,000 unique visitors a month, probably you're going to want to have a server, and probably you're going to want to know what you're doing. Okay, cool. You know, start looking for your memes as well. It's a really crazy thing, you guys, just for fun. Just, it'll, these will act as percolators just for fun. Um, put type in your keyword and then meme and you'll find them on Google Images. Some of them are really bad but some of them are really funny and the SEO industry has a ton of memes, right? Some of them are silly and stupid but once in a while you'll find one that's kind of funny. I've done all kinds of experimentations of taking these memes and driving them through Facebook and the rest and so always put your brand your main domain URL link on your memes, guys, right? If you use them. Okay. All right, so you get these. Is your is your prospect actively looking for solutions where there's a keyword, so on and so forth? So go through this and really get the hang of this. Watch my videos on Irrational Passion. I even show you some examples of magazines.com. Soon I've been using that method of looking at verticals since 2005. It hasn't changed. Magazines.com is still around. If there's a magazine on that thing, there's something going on. It's weird because sometimes there is a magazine on a niche. A market is so big, like weddings, for instance. There's a magazine that's about weddings, but there's also a magazine that's about wedding cakes. So that is a niche or a sub-niche interest inside of vertical. You guys understand that? Okay, Tim is asking, let me just stop for Tim for a second. Tim is asking, so is my hangover area, is the vertical hangover or alcohol? Great question. Um, I would drill into the word hangover, and I would look and see what it is that comes up in Kraken. Okay? I would look and see how big it is. And I would probably drill, I would probably look at hangover first. By the way, you can, uh, you can bootstrap. If you don't know what your vertical is in Kraken, and again, you can talk to Matt about this because he's drilling some for you. You can drill into your single keyword because hangover is a single word. And that's, I don't think it's a vertical market in general. I think it's a problem and a, you know, it's like a headache or anything else. Right, so I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know that market, but it's vertical. It would be contained within the vertical, within a vertical. If you kick into hangover, 
just see what's brought back, and you'll probably have your vertical brought back when you drill in a hangover, guys. That's what's so cool about Kraken. All right, you'll, you'll get a pretty good idea what it is. Okay, so there's magazines. Now, video three, what does the score mean? We get into that. So finish that up. And Robin Ward talks a little bit about her, her perspective on if your product is a vitamin. I liked that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move quickly on to ISDNA. I want to spend most of the time in here because you guys can use the uh, pain finder software itself. Now keep in mind that what we're really looking for is your one-line zinger. For instance, I'm already percolating in my mind what Brian and Tim's and Lee's, what all, every industry has anywhere between one and five statements that when you drop them, people will respond immediately or click immediately. It's almost hypnotic. Okay, And, and this entire process that we're going through is to find a universal one-liner that will that you can put on a banner that people will be able to learn, to click that they'll be most it'll act as a click magnet okay and it, who knows what it is it might be get rid of your hangover in 45 seconds <laughs> you know I don't know okay you can use time it, presuming that time is a factor and you wouldn't know that until you did research we just did this in society in um, stop smoking industry where we were trying to figure out like for vaporizers what do people really care about? And we kind of started to discover that a lot of people really care about not wanting all the gadgetry, you know, not wanting to spend 200 years to put together, like, you know, when you can just light a cigarette in 10 seconds, why would you want to spend 35 minutes putting together a vaporizer? You know what I mean? So then that discovery led to the fact that speed is an issue. And it's like, you know, and then the, the simple one-line zinger could end up being, we're still researching, but, you know, get up, you know, get vaping and, less than five minutes. It's like, thank you. Right? You guys get what I mean? Give me a one if you understand. I mean, and that pain may not be really obvious. I mean, you know, somebody might be really into tinkering around with vaporizers and making gigantic vaporizers and the kits and the wicks and all these types of things. And they may figure that everybody else is like totally into like tinkering. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what happened in that scenario. So that's really what, you can't make any assumptions. You got to ask around. You got to find out what's really going on. And don't use yourself always if you're a particular angle. I'm on the wrong thing, sorry. Okay, now we're going to get into the ISDNA. Go ahead and watch the Innovator's Dilemma. It is related. Um, the, the Innovator's Dilemma does speak to the fact that people don't necessarily know what they want. And as an inventor or as a, as a problem solver, you can provide them with excellent solutions. And you don't really want to use the market's idea of what your product should be. I should probably cover that more in here. As much as the pain that you're trying to solve. In other words, I'm not a fan of customer feedback on whether, whether or not they think your product should be even created. Because as Henry Ford said, if I had asked people if they wanted the automobile, they would have laughed at me, said no, and asked for faster horses. You guys understand what I mean? The ISDNA FAQ SAQ worksheet is not about customer or product surveying. <laughs> oh my God. Which to me has been, for the most part, unless you're a huge organization like Procter & Gamble, the biggest freaking waste of money I've ever seen in corporate America is all these case studies and these types of things when you can just go in and look at the core of the pain. There's some very, very funny stories. You know, it's like that tele it's like that movie Big. I don't know if you saw about the the guy, the kid who becomes an adult for, you know, he starts and works at a toy company. And he told them like in five minutes how badly like all their toys sucked. And they were the obvious things. Like why did the arms of this doll fall off? Like he spent $2 million to find out the arms of a doll shouldn't fall off. So this is what I'm really saying is pain finding is not about product serving. It's not about, um, it's about looking at the problem that your invention is trying to solve. That's why ISDNA is invention solution, industry solution. Originally meant in the invention when Sue and I first created it, the concept. Okay, so FAQ, SAQ, let's go ahead and quickly. Here's a, here's a downloaded uh, example. And the one, one of the main jobs that I have, you guys, on Tech Foundation 1 is to make sure that you complete this stuff. Because I cannot tell you what a difference it makes 
for your success. It's I, trying to save you the pain and difficulty and problems that I experienced early on as, with ThemeZoom. And I'm going to give you an example of that, just so you guys know I'm trying to save you time. When we first came to the market, Sue and I created ThemeZoom 1.0. We were building a software, God forbid, that was supposed to automatically do your research, silo your products, help you understand which, pro, you know, which themes should be in your silo, organize the SEO and the link flow, put it onto a website, like all these things, like literally, like my mentor, Bruce Clay, thought I was nuts. Like he just was like, you what? <laughs> this is the guy who had taught me, uh, you know, SEO silo structure. And then I met him at an SEO conference and he was like, you guys are amazing. Like that's like, you got a, you got some cojones. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's all Sue. I had nothing to do with it. That's <laughs> Uh, the point is that I wanted to share with you here is that we were playing on, at the time, a frequently asked question, which is, what is keyword research? That's where I got my start. And that's where Sue and my relationship really started. With my first client, bizfilings.com, we were doing, we had over 100,000 keywords or more. And I was asking her if I could build a tool that would organize these things. And the rest was history. That's how our software company came to exist. We, you hand extract the parent theme. So I've given you a process that I did not have. You hand extract the parent theme. It's going to be keyword research. That's a frequently asked question, and you want to rank for that and go for that. Okay. You put a summary. Sometimes the summary. This is what's oftentimes re, you know confused with product group you know, surveys and stuff like that. No, this is just like talking to people. Like, what's your pain around this issue, around keyword research? And the students that I talked to was. I keep confusing keyword research tools and, and, and the data that I get from keyword research tools like Market, like market Samurai or, you know, um, Word Tracker, all these things. You know, I keep confusing them for market research tools. And people really did confuse market research with keyword research. And we, we as a group just went through that a few minutes ago. What, is a, what do we mean by vertical market, right? Okay, versus keyword vertical. Are they the same? Yeah, sometimes, but okay. And so after talking to a bunch of people, the question behind the question, it's like after I talked to several over the years, just a lot of people, what is the difference between, uh, how do I avoid, the question behind the question is how do I avoid costly SEO mistakes when launching an online business and website? And you're going to have to make these jumps, okay? So people, what we discover is that mis people mistakenly think that keyword research will help them decide if they should build a specific business, which required vertical market research, but not keyword research. In other words, a lot of people are doing keyword research to determine what business to build, and that's not really that helpful. I mean, affiliates especially like to do that. Okay, so that's where the mistake begins. All right, so the question behind the question is, I want to do key, a lot of people were not moving on from keyword research because they were afraid of failure. They didn't want to do any costly mistakes, and they were getting all confused about stuff. They were over um, making it overcomplicated. But that resulted in a should-ask question over the years. In fact, in the first couple of years, we had this down, and we used it a lot in our headlines and copies, and it was like, guys, what is the difference between keyword research and market research? People were thinking that they're the same thing. And I'm hoping that you guys by now know that they're not. And if you don't, that's a different point, and it's an important one. Keyword research is not market research. Kraken is a market research tool. The last keyword tool is a keyword research tool. Why? Because Kraken drills into vertical keywords and gives an indication of what the market is doing, and therefore it's market research. Give me a one if you understand that, just as a side, and two if you do not. Look spanned on that. Tim does not understand that. Okay. And there's a few other people that do. Oh, you don't understand. Okay. Good. Um, we're going to get into that. A, ver a market is the behaviors happening in a, uh, for example, yes, Neil is saying he wished that they were integrated into one tool, uh, Kraken and, and TLKT. It's extremely difficult to do that. I'm sure the rest of the world does too. Of course, the rest of the world doesn't have a vertical market research tool either. This is the only one that we know of. Um, but yeah, it would be nice. What we are going to do is put um, the last keyword tool into DWS NE Silo Builders next version, and then you'll have aspects of that. Kraken was an incredibly difficult tool to build, and 
therefore, we needed to keep the keyword perspective separate. However, if you do a blueprint in Kraken, you'll get the same, you'll get um, keyword level drills in the blueprint output for the articles if you do the blueprint, automatic blueprint generation. But I do, I appreciate your feedback, Neil, and I understand where you're coming from. We're actually moving into that direction. <laughs> it's quite costly to put all that together. Uh, but yes, thank you for that feedback. Also, Tim, uh, keyword research, for instance, your keyword might be tax. This is the same product, that the same issue that we had uh, a few moments ago. Your keyword might be tax uh, savings or tax whatever that other person was doing. And then he said his market was, he was hoping that his market was money problems, right? Money problems is a keyword, but it's also a market. Uh, money problems might contain tax savings in it, but it also might not. Okay, that's an example of a difference between a keyword and a market. So when he said that his keyword was tax, um, you know, I think, what was it? What was your keyword again? Tax? Uh, keep wanting to say tax evasion, but that better not be it. Uh, tax savings or something like that. There's, there's idea about, there are ideas about what market tax savings are in, and then there's the reality, okay? So the, so tax savings is really a part of the, uh, as, is really a part of, yeah, tax reduction or something similar. Tax reduction is, we, we actually, I actually don't know for sure what tax reduction's vertical, its actual vertical is. Its vertical keyword is going to be tax, its theme keyword. So the challenge that we had is helping people to not guess, but understand what market a keyword is a part of, okay? It's almost like you look at Amazon, you go, okay, your keyword is, you know, dinner plates. Well, that's a part of the dinnerware category, and then dinnerware category is part of kitchen, right? Well, that's all part of home improvement as a market, or, or home furnishings as a, right? So you have to determine what your product is versus your category versus what the market is, okay? So it's different for everybody. Like what, for instance, is the car, as a car that you're buying, that's what market are you in? You're in the automobile market, right? But is automobile your keyword that you're trying to rank for? Not really. And if you are, it's going to take you a while to get there, uh, but to whether or not you, whether or not you're going to try to rank for that vertical. Making any more sense, Tim, or I still slid over it? We can move on if you have more questions about that. We also have some pretty cool uh, Wiki entries about the difference between, that's better, okay. Hmm, okay. Well, I, I want to tighten that up, Tim, so I really want you to understand it, but let's just move on. Um, a market <clears throat> is a group of niches, and they may not be related, and they may not even have the same businesses and business owners, okay? But they can all be related, and Kraken can bring back all those relationships. We'll get more into that as we go. So what I did here is the next step is the, the should ask questions is the reason that we, we came up with the should ask question is that <clears throat> it seemed to really help our students understand that there's a difference. Okay. And similarly to what I was just doing with you just now, Tim, and by helping people segre segregate, their, get clear about the market they were in, then they were more able to readily organize their keywords. And then we actually added... Uh, you hand extract your theme from the should ask questions. It has two keywords. It has keyword research and market research. And you can see how that's kind of interesting because market research then afforded an entirely new drill in Kraken because we suddenly realized that market research, we could position our product, which at the time was themes in 1.0. We could position it as a market research tool and a keyword research tool. Another market research tool we have is Pain Finder. Pain Finder is a market research tool by virtue of the fact that it drills into people's problems. And it finds out, you can find out based on the product that you're trying to market. So making a bad keyword choice for website building, poor SEO, confused about my website blueprint, choosing the wrong keywords for website SEO optimization, making zero money with my website, these became the pain behind the question. And I had to talk to several people to find out, but these were the fears and the pains that our painkiller, which is themes in 1.0, started to evolve to address. We wanted to help people make better decisions 
Um, once we got to the pain behind the questions, we were able to design our software. And we also hand-stracted some of the keywords when people started sharing their fears with us and their pains and their problems. Things that they were having a really difficult time with were, how do I get keywords onto my website in the right location? Okay, and that's really what DWS Any Silo Builder uh, was built to do. And it act actually, we got enough feedback from the market that people wanted that solution. That the pain of doing the keyword research, integrating the keyword research, putting it onto a site in the right place, that seemed to be a real pain in the market. And so that's then validated the fact that we had a, a, a base of customers. Okay? Hand extract, then we, of course, we just pull those keywords out of there. Once you have the pain behind the question, you have a whole bunch of secondary themes and keywords, such as SEO keyword research, SEO optimization, SEO website blueprint, and some of these are not really big money keywords. But SEO website blueprint, we have actually kind of seen website blueprint grow over the last five years. Like even five years ago, website blueprint wasn't really a word. Now it's people are starting to look for blueprints, not even with SEO in it, just blueprints for their website. So this cottage industry of website development, of course, is a billion, trillion dollar industry. It's a macro trend. And then SEO blueprints for websites, it's a pretty much a niche thing at this point, and we're probably one of the industry leaders on that. But it didn't even exist in 2005. So over time, you can see that these things start to grow. And I know this because I researched them in Kraken, and I've been watching them for years. Okay, Keyword optimization. And so you just drill and you pull these keywords out. So these keywords were actually extracted from human beings and from hanging out with people and students. They weren't pulled only from... What I did is I take, took some of these ideas, I pulled these words, and I researched them and found out, you know, if they were themes, what was going on, okay? And always remember that this entire process that you go through, your FAQ to SAQ, uh, remember to put in column J on your spreadsheet. Hopefully you guys are all there. Put the product that you're targeting. Like, for example, I don't really know, I know the niches that you guys are in, but I don't really know what products you're selling. For instance, I don't know if the hangover guy has a, you know, hair of the dog product or something like that. I don't know if it's an herb or I don't know if it's an a e-book or whatever the case may be. But that's really incredibly important to know. You know, what's interesting about this process is, is that if you actually are writing a book or creating the product, this is the same process that we have here is actually a product prototyping flow. This is the same type of process that you can use to actually invent or build products as an inventor as well. Hopefully you guys know that there's nothing worse than building a product that nobody wants or creating a product or service that answers a question that nobody has. And I'm going to confess to you that in 2005, there were only a few people in the country that were looking at website silo architecture. Sue and I have spent at least a million dollars of our own personal time and energy funds and assets educating the industry on website silo architecture. See what I mean? Probably would have been smarter if I'd gone in and just created a keyword tool and just sold a lot of keyword research and not tried to give people the big picture. Give me a one if you guys understand that, that it's really expensive to educate a market. I cannot emphasize that enough. I've done that. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. We are SEO silo website construction. There are knockoffs. We were the originals, with the exception of Bruce Clay, who taught it to us. But we were the first to program it, develop it, talk about it. God forbid, try to put it into a plugin. Which, by the way, the next version is done. I'm very excited. You guys are going to love it. Rebuilt from the ground up. Just a few days. All right, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, now, you have to try a couple practice uh, shots. And I want to see some of your papers. So when you go and you do this, it may feel a little bit like a struggle for a second, especially if you're trying to work in a vacuum. And if you can't talk to real human beings like I did, you can also look around. You can try to see what the pains are. You can use Pain Finder to see what kind of questions are asking, people are asking. And if you've got a lot of people asking the same question, you know, then there's a problem around this issue. There's a confusion. And you have to read between the lines. What is the question behind the question? Like everything has like, what is keyword research really about? Well, the idea is to be able to have a word on your page that attracts somebody who's going to click your buy button, right? 
That's the real thing. What words are people using? So at the end of the day, the question behind the question is, how can I make more money? Like, <laughs> that's what, why I went into keyword research. It's really like, how can I attract people with breadcrumbs and ideas that they're going to use to buy stuff? Okay, cool. So give me a one if you understand generally the overview. You don't have to understand everything. Or two if you're totally confused. I have to allow that as an option. Okay, you guys have a general overview. Good. I'm pleased. I want to give you guys a kudos. This process is pretty close to the process of inventing things from scratch. Isn't that kind of weird? And I will tell you, there have been times where Sue and I have done this process and gone back to the drawing board with an invention or looked at the market and said, okay, how much is it? And there's another process that we use now that I have not incorporated into week two called Lean Canvas. If you're talking about inventing a product, guys, if you're, if you're creating your own product, please see me or ping us on Skype or go into the Tech Level 2 Foundation. I would want you to go through one other hoop that is not here, and I don't teach it in this course because you don't really need it in this course. If you're inventing a product or even a service, uh, Neil has asked, please make sure that you do a lean canvas. Sue and I do it every time. The reason we don't teach it in this course is most of the people who come to this course already have a product or service, okay? But I'm just going to go hit quick to a side note. I cannot speak highly enough about Eric and Ash and all the other guys at LeanStack. Just go ahead and sign up for a free, and again, this is if you are inventing from scratch, okay? If you are inventing from scratch a brand new product and you've never done a product before, please go ahead and do this Lean Canvas process. It's very, very fast. It's going to help you not fail. I don't mind about failing faster, but I don't want you guys to fail at product and kickoff and launching. There's nothing more disheartening. There's, mu there's nothing more threatening to your business, you know, Go ahead and learn about the problem solution, unique value proposition, unfair advantage, channels, revenue, cost structure. You know what? You guys are so awesome. I'm going to give you um, a $1,000 gift. Does anybody want me to give you a $1,000 gift? Give me a one or two if you would. It's, I don't think it will confuse you. Uh, all right. But I would ask you to please keep it on in this course. There's a new version being revamped for the live certification event. I normally only give this to live certification students, but since we're talking about the business, this, I'm going to consider this a bonus. I don't do this with every um, foundation. Just go to um, go to futureproofempire.com and um, <clears throat> go ahead and feel free to use this. This is normally for cert students. I know that most of you are going to be making it to the certification event anyways, so at some point, um, this course, for instance, that you're taking right now with me is usable as a voucher against live certification uh, at any time, not just this upcoming year, but whenever. We take our students seriously. We want you to succeed, and so there you have it. This, uh, again, the reason I bring it up uh, as a distraction is because we do have the Lean Canvas on here. Again, when Sue and I sit down to create a plugin, when we decide what we're incorporating into software, we use the Lean Canvas brainstorm sheet. You can see it's step two on the Future Proof Empire. What you're looking at here with the Future Proof Empire is the entire process from beginning to end about how to integrate your emotional tasks with your technical tasks, your entrepreneurial, in other words, the inspiration for the human world, for the emotional elephant, with the technical uh, SEO and what I call the geek tasks. You can see that he's staring at this giant number like John Nash, right, on the board. There's two worlds that you have to incorporate to be successful on Business Online, folks, if you want to break that million-dollar point. I'm speaking from experience. Is you're going to have to understand what tasks in your whole empire-building process are being done to appease human beings. Remember we talked about that? There, she is, there he is again. And which ones are being done so that you can be technically robust? Give me a one if you understand that distinction, two if you're not sure. I'm going to go ahead and drop this PDF into the uh, chats windows for you all. 
just so you have it to download. as a bonus. Uh-oh. Can you guys give me a one if you can hear me? I'm starting to get some problems. You can? Okay. Having a very strange problem. If I lose you, I'll figure it out. Okay, so future use proof empire. It's not it's not something that I talk about and it's only one page, so it's not well trafficked. This is the document, just feel free to download it. Notice that all of that stuff has to be done before you get into automatic creation of pin vid stuff. See that down here? Everybody give me a one. <laughs> automatic video traffic stuff comes after you've built your business. Because you'll blow yourself up otherwise. <laughs> you'll have all this traffic coming in and you'll forget what's happening you won't be targeting your person's problem you won't be really there trying to help them and or offering a product that helps them and then people will bounce right off that page won't they so I've shown you here in this little blueprint uh, it was designed to help you separate the emotional world start with why your marketing message the vision for your company in other words persuasion architect persuasion architecture is very different than technical architecture. Persuasion, that is human persuasion, communication, is very different than SEO business decision architecture and silo architecture, right? Spend some time with this chart. Feel free to connect my, correct my typos. I think I created it in less than 45 minutes before one of my sessions in the live event. I had had a lot of coffee. All right, so use it. Feel free to create that. And uh, if you have any questions on it, let me know. Okay, good. So we just took a diversion. The diversion was only for those of you creating products from scratch. Please do a lean stack, lean canvas. And, of course, Sue and I talk about where that lean canvas is done. It's going to be right here on step two. Make a lean canvas. The tools and software. Create your first high-level business canvas before you spend a dime. Okay? Please, if you're building your own products or running your own company, guys, read Lean Startup by Eric Rice. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Read it or listen to it on tape. It's one of the more important books that I've read in the last couple of years, okay, about how to pivot properly, how to position properly after you've done your Lean Canvas. Okay, good. All right, we're going to wrap this up shortly, but I want to make sure we're going to open it up for questions. Um, your tasks this week are to make sure that you set up your FAQs and SAQs. Try to do at least three to five. You might find yourself feeling exhausted. If you feel exhausted when you're creating an FAQ, SAQ, go to our Skype room for insp inspiration, okay? Kick around in there. We'll try to, you know, you guys have priority for us. So, you know, if you're having a struggle, let me know. Uh, the deeper pain finder software training uh, is also in this module. Go through the complete module. If you find yourself feeling tired, probably you're not very familiar with your market. And I'm going to put this out here. I, I don't normally teach it like this. If you're feeling tired when you're creating your FAQ to SAQ matrix, probably you don't care about solving the problem of your market. Let's try that one more time. I had discovered that people who get exhausted when they're creating their FAQ to SAQ, they don't understand what they're selling and they don't understand the product that solves. In other words, they don't necessarily understand what was in the mind of the creator of the product or service, and they're not really that interested in understanding why the market would buy it, right? You must understand what's going on inside the minds of people in pain that you're serving in the market, okay? And if you don't, you're not going to be able to create a, a, should ask, a frequently asked questions, should ask questions. And here's the cool thing. The entire layout of the FAQ to SAQ process is designed so that even if you don't know what's going on in the brains of your market, by the time you're done researching, you will. Why? Because you're going to use Pain Finder to find out what questions people are asking. And you're going to use Google to find out what questions people are asking. I am surprised, to be honest. Sometimes I find out when I'm researching, I think I know a market, and then 10% of the market is asking a weird question. 
<laughs> it's like, why would they even ask that? And then you find out, oh, it's a question that's specific to WordPress, which has a ubiquitous, you know, it's a really rich uh, part of this market. You know, when WordPress started to kick off, for instance, and all of a sudden that question should be addressed. And this process of frequently asked questions to should ask questions becomes really useful to cure writer's block, which we talk about in Tech Foundation Level 2. Uh, we go into that way, way deeper. But you guys will already be prepared for that because you understand what is the pain behind the pain and what are the questions behind the question. What is really going on? Why would somebody ask? Like, for, I'm trying to give you a for instance. Um, uh, for instance, let me see here. Somebody give me an, let me see. I had one, let me see, look at here. Oh yeah, here, this seems really easy like when we're looking at it. Okay, here's a question behind the question. <laughs> this is the very human side of things. How do I safely rank higher on the search engines? It seems obvious in retrospect that that is the question behind the question uh, of frequently asked questions. How do, how do I rank my website? I added safe here, and that really wasn't the frequently asked question. A couple years ago, safety wasn't an issue. It is now. But this one really, be, this question is lingering behind almost any questions people ask about SEO. And I got to tell you, I really wasn't aware of it. When we launched the Panda, the Panda Penguin Hospital course, I expected, you know, maybe four or five people would be interested. When we closed our doors the following day to the Traffic Panda Hospital course, we had five people still begging to get in and harassing me on Skype. And, I, and then even still, they're coming in. And this is an example where the pain in the market right now, like I know, I think Sue would probably agree with me, we haven't seen anything like this kind of pain in terms of de-indexing and penalties in at least not in my online career as an SEO auditor. Um, so that's something that you, these are the things where pain increases in a market where the winds shift, something goes up and people have to deal with penalties and and the rest. So what's the, so the question behind the question with almost every people almost every person who asks me something about SEO or, asks Jimmy is not it's not only how do I rank higher on the search engines the word of safety is almost always a presumption now. They don't even come out and ask. They just assume that we know that they don't want to get penalized. Right? So this became a huge question behind the question. Does that make sense to you guys? Additionally, the my favorite is the pain behind the question. Most people, remember this guy, this is Neuromarketing 101. Most people are not coming right out and just asking you for what's really going on. I mean, other guys. Otherwise, you guys would come to me and say, uh, "Russell, give me some money." If I, I said, I'm, "I'm here to help you get what you want," you would say, "Okay, well then, give me some money," <laughs> right? I mean, a lot of the things that we're doing is designed to make money. So the pain behind the question is, you know, how do I start an online business? The pain is oftentimes, how do I make more money? For instance, okay, that's the real question. So rather than just creating that that real going right for that, I will. I go for the pain behind the question and find out what's hurting them. This is a great example of the person here earlier who was talking about tax savings or, you know, saving on taxes. He he came right out of the gates. I think it was Lionel, I think, or Neil. He came right out of the gate saying, you know, save money or money problems. That's an example of the pain behind the question. So was it Lionel that was doing the tax thing? Who's doing the tax thing? Yeah, you're the tax guy, Neil. Sorry, I'll remember that next time. Uh, you came right out of the gates with the PBQ, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I mean, because that means you're more of the marketer type. Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the reasons that people are asking is they just don't want to lose money. You know, so that's an example. And I find that this generally becomes more the marketing angle when we go back to what we were talking about earlier, which is the stackable system. Here, that usually becomes. the message, okay, 
And when you start resync, when you start understanding what's going on in the mind, your headlines, and what the real pain is, and the PBQ, the pain behind the question, is not the vertical market, guys. And what Neil did is he came out with a PBQ and then made it the vertical market. But it's not necessarily. <laughs> it may be a vertical. There may be a relationship or a tangent theme in the vertical market, but. Okay, we're going to go open this up to questions now because you know your assignments. We've been on for a good hour and a half. Um, and let's go ahead and close the session with questions. We have a question here. How do you address the knowledge of the market problem when doing client sites? Uh, <laughs> okay, great question, Neil. All right, let's address that. What do you do when the product and the service and the idea that your client has sucks? <laughs> That's the, that's the question behind your question, Neil. <laughs> or it's not, and I'm projecting, but that's a question that I have uh, oftentimes. Well, here's the problem. Like all that stuff that I showed you with Lean Canvas, you guys are going to become pretty oh, – you're, you're thinking more about expertise. Okay. Maybe I should shift the way that I address that then. The problem that I've had with teaching people to be really, really successful entrepreneurs is that – it's hard for them to reduce themselves into the package of just doing SEO for people anymore because a lot of the times what people have is not an SEO problem. It's a business intelligence problem. It's a entrepreneurial problem. They think they have a product or a service and what they have is something that the market doesn't ask for or want and thinks is creepy to make it worse. So what you have to do is be aware that you guys are entrepreneurs. And there are times, if you're, not, if you're an SEO, there are times, there's certain things you can't fix. You can't, I think there's some impolite ways of saying it, you paint lipstick on a pig, you know, that type of thing. I'm just saying that there are some times it's not your job. If they hire you to do SEO and rank, that's your job, right? So I'm trying to understand what Neil is actually asking. How do you address the knowledge of the market problem when doing client sites? I really don't understand the question behind that. Can you give me more information? Feeling tired and FA. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. What Neil is saying is if I if I'm trying to do this for if I'm trying to do the FAQ to SAQ site, uh, I'm sorry, FAQ to SAQ, and it's not your business. You have to find a you have to find a way. How should I say this politely? Um, I have all kinds of metaphors for it, but they're all kind of not polite. You have to find a way to um, you have to get there. Okay? Uh, in other words, you have to one of the jobs as a coach or a client or as an instructor is you're being paid to get yourself inside someone else's head. And a lot of the times you're not being paid enough, so the degree to which you're willing to do that it's got to be limited based on what you're getting paid. And you have, to, uh, you have to look at things from their perspective. In other words, if you're feeling tired because you're doing a client site, first and foremost, you guys, if you're doing this for clients, you should be, paying, you should be getting paid a lot of money. <laughs> okay. You are doing stuff now. Please understand that the process I'm running you through, you can make two to $10,000 for doing. Give me a one if you heard me or two if you, don't, if you do not believe me. You can easily get $2,000 just for building out the intelligence, easily. And that's not enough. But you have to sell it like anything else. It's a service. It's got to be on your website. You have to be known for it. There's got to be a buy button. It's a product like anything else. Okay, it's called market research. You do market research, it's different than keyword research. If you want me to do a lean canvas for you, if you want me to do an FAQ to SAQ, that's not included as keyword research, for crying out loud. It's certainly not included as a website construct. I'll build your website for you, splat. There it is, $2,000 please. You want me to research it? $10,000 please, right? Separate, you guys, if you are running agencies, separate your market research and your business intelligence from your website development and your SEO. Three different buckets. Expensive. So if you're dealing with a client, uh, what you're really looking at there is you got to look at it from there. My suggestion would be bring it to the Skype group if you got if you're feeling uninspired, Neil. Uh, 
And other than that, I can't really help you unless I have more of an example. So if you're feeling tired and you go, yeah, Sue, please jump in, help me out. Because <laughs> I, I don't like to work for clients that much, so. Right, and I've probably had more client experience recently, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I like to do, so the, the FAQ is obviously the generic question, and most of the time my clients will give me FAQs that are not true FAQs. So you want to make those a little bit more general, and then as you go from the FAQ to the SAQ, the SAQ is going to be how does their product fill the pain in the marketplace. So in other words, the FAQ is designed to position their product. Right. So so you want, you're looking for how their product, what is the aspect of their product that fills that pain better than anybody else in the marketplace. And so you formulate the SAQ around the uh, benefits of their product or the expertise in their product or whatever that is, whatever their uniqueness in the marketplace is, whatever distinguishes them from their competitors. Yes, in fact, that's really good. Um, I realize probably there's been, um, I didn't want to over make it overly complicated, but in order to get through the keywords, remember this process of the FAQ, SAQ really is a whole process of keyword extraction, looking at the dialogues, looking at the pain, it's kind of a mix mash of everything to get to the end result, but the end result is the distinction of your product. It's also the develop it's also used for product development. Okay. So I have found that doing a lean canvas for my own products before I do the FAQ SAQ is very, very helpful. And I would only recommend that again if you're doing your own products. But you know, Sue and I haven't really talked that much. We haven't rolled that out as part of our curriculum, but more and more I am helping people by doing a quick overview canvas before they get into the, the spreadsheet drill down. It really does depend on what it is that the, that you're doing. But the bottom line is that <sighs> creating distinction is most is going to be most of your client's problem. Sue has made a very, very good point. Um, and part of that's done with a vitamin or painkiller. Remember in the $4 million questions where it said, you know, are people actually searching for, for the product and there was only a few options out there for the product? This is why I really like distinction. I don't like going into markets where there's 500 people selling slight variations of the same thing. It's not me. I don't operate in that well in that kind of environment. I create a distinction or I'll invent it and sell that. So um, somebody has asked that I distinguish between market research and business intelligence. Can you expand a little on the business intelligence part? I probably should not have used the word business intelligence. That was kind of an accident. Um, but business intelligence is really more about analyzing an organization's raw data. So it, it kind of, there's a lot of different disciplines in it. It's more like data processing and it's more about big data. So I really probably should not have used that word, Lee. Thanks for calling me out on that. I really meant market research. Let's just keep it market research. Sue and I went down a rabbit hole one, one week with, um, with business intelligence and I, I'm very much interested in big data and Sue's a, really skilled at big data concepts and this so um, sorry that was I really shouldn't have said that the distinction should really be keyword research I just wanted to talk to you guys about agent if you're an agency charge create different products keyword research if it's going to be included please be sure to account for your time and developing your site and the stuff that we've just done I don't know you guys roll it out in your own way if you're an agency but I don't include keyword research and when I outsource somebody putting up a website uh, personally necessarily. Um, and if it's a silo site, that silo site is going to be priced because we are, we, we are building done for use for this process, right? To build the site. But we put them out on a process, don't we, Sue? It's like, okay, here's the package for, you know, doing the, re the silo research, right? And then here's the package for building the site, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, that, so that's the way we're laying it out. I can show you those pages actually, they're in development, but really separate I want you guys to separate your things out. I, I talked to a student the other day. It was her price for building a website has not gone up, but she's incorporated all of our stuff into building sites now for roughly the same price as she was like in two thousand thirteen. <laughs> and I, for me that's like, honey, you need a raise. 
<laughs> like a big one. And then so she raised her price and holy smokes, like she got it with like not even an eye bat, right? All right, I think we've been on for an hour and a half. This has been fairly long. If there are no more questions, I'm going to close. And um, if there are any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and give it 30 seconds. Your homework assignment should be, while I'm waiting for those last questions to come in, your homework assignment should be clear. I've given you the location of where that homework assignment is in your paper area. Let me just uh, double check. I think it's in here somewhere. Um, it's on the top level. Just scroll, scroll down, you'll be able to get to homework assignment where I showed at the beginning of the, the course. I think it's in this one. Okay, just go back up to the main page and go ahead and roll those, start rolling those things out. Your coach, whoever you get with, probably be Matt, is going to may question you on those things. And remember, you're going to have to get the keywords that are happening for you to Matt so that we can do the, the development. And one thing, we did, one thing we did not do is go over the break-even calculator. I, um, this is related to the Lean Canvas type concept, but um, this is something that Matt has created. Let me make sure this thing is still up. I think it is. Yeah. It's a break-even calendar, uh, sorry, calculator just gets you into the mindset that we also use when we're teaching any silo builder or DWS. We want you to start looking at how much you guys are how much are you going to make with this product? Like, put your price and just run it through the calculator, okay? Start thinking about, oh, man, I'm going to need to make 5,000 sales, you know, to make, like, $4. <laughs> you know, like, make sure you're going to make money. I want you guys to be aware that business projection, profit sculpting, super important. You're going to see more information on that, on that uh, Future Proof Empire document that I gave you all. Why am I using you all? must be getting ready for Nashville. Um, so just make sure that you're starting to project uh, your money. Just do some play around with it a little bit. In DWS Any Silo Builder software, we do have a, a business decision calculator. Okay, that's the same kind of concept. But go ahead and play around. Watch the video. Matt will show you how to do that. Really well done. This stuff is where I learned a ton from Matt on ROI. He really has encouraged me over the years to really project. Before you even step out, make sure that you're not, you know, rolling out with, a minimum viable product, an MVP, that's going to make you so little money that it almost doesn't justify your, your debt, your IT debt. Make sense, guys? Make sure that you're not launching with a $4 minimum viable product unless you have a market that's really distinct and millions of people want it. Okay. All right. And that's it for today. We have the upcoming, let's just go ahead and take a look at the, well, the upcoming calendar. It'll be the same time next week, Thursday. And you're going to be moving into... The next session, I believe the next session is going to be Matt. And, of course, your homework needs to it's be done. Me. It's Sue. Let me just double check. Uh, apologies, Sue. We talk Sue. about keywords and we talk about... Oh, um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. So many courses at this point. Uh, <laughs> yes, my apologies. Themes, keywords, and competitors. This is going to be a seriously badass module. So jump in to your wo 2 I know you're all busy. I want to express my appreciation for taking time out of a busy life to improve your skills. And uh, here's a couple of follow-ups. Uh, someone has said, great advice. I never thought about separating keyword and market research from a website development. Thank you. Yes, you definitely can. You could step up with a more expensive package for market research and say, hey, you know, let me tell you, you know, what's going on here. At that point, Lee, you're, you're getting really into online business advisor advisory at that point. At that point, you're moving, and you know, you can, you're still an SEO. You're still, you know, when you have those kinds of skills to be able to incorporate all those, you're more than just a search engine professional optimization expert. Okay, we act, you know, you're part of a new breed that we're building. Cert, you know, themes and certification is not about SEO certification per se. That's like SEO is like, oh, by the way. You know, <laughs> yes, I'm SEO certified. But we're, you're teaching people or yourself how to integrate social activation, semantic web optimization, domain authority stacking. In other words, how to build a broadcasting environment 
that pays you dividends sustainably for a long, long time to come. And that's really what you're certified. And as far as we know, there are no certifications in perpetual money and traffic technology and human integration and development. <laughs> so when we come up with a name for it, we'll let you know. <laughs> all right, you guys. Russell Wright, Sue Bell, Network Empire and Themes Zoom, fantastic. You've all been incredibly partic uh, incredible participants and active. We will see you next week, 11 o'clock, for Module 3, Themes, Keywords, and Competitors. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.